you can hear that we're now recording. Good morning, all. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, a few of us here. Where's everybody else? One wonders, doesn't one? Um, <laughs> however, um, there's enough to get going, I think. Um, last time we talked about something called borders, I seem to remember. Repel all borders, as they said on pirate ships. But this was not quite the same. So I sent you a video of what we did and um, a copy of my uh, Unit 8 uh, course that I did a long time ago, uh, Sheila and I did, and um, photo, I sent you a link to PhotoSketcher 3.8, the latest version, and a link for Professor Franklin and the F F FS Viewer and the Photoscape, but I didn't send you one for Earth and Viewer. Did anyone ever make a border using Earth and Viewer? No. I had a lot of problems with the whole of that list. Um, Exe, yeah, because they most of the many of them were Exe files, and Mac won't support Exe files. Oh yes. And I'm the not. other thing was the photo sketcher. I sent I CC'd you into that one with Peter, the other Peter, um, because we couldn't. Our operating system is. Um, too recent for the pho photo sketcher and it wouldn't download. Okay. Yeah, so I'll... I was stuck with iPicky and Photoshop. Yeah, I didn't mean to put that on my list, did I? <laughs> yes, right. Okay. Well, with both of those two, you can do a wide, wide range of variations of borders, can't you? The sound's breaking up, Peter. Okay. I can't help that. It's just one of those things. Yeah. You sound head. like Donald Duck. <laughs> Try a fisherman's friend. <laughs> Can you hear that? Can't, can't hear you at all. Can't hear a thing. You're blasting my ears out. Yeah, now we can hear you. Yeah. Now we can hear you. Hold on a minute. I've got to get the... There's a control on this wire, which I've got to figure out. That's minus. That's plus. Would you like to speak? Yeah, that's fine. That is fine. No, I want you to talk. Hello. <laughs> Hello and good morning. Thank you. Yes, that's right. That'll do. I think that's... I can't remember which is what on here. I can't read the things on this little, little thing. It's so small. I can't read what's what. Ah, I can see it better on there, actually, strangely. There's a plus and a minus just here. No, I can't read what the rest are. Minus is the second one down, but I'm not sure, to be honest. Anyway, right. I hope you can hear me now. Yes. Yes. No. Good. No. Good, right. And it says low system resources may affect your audio quality. Try closing down some applications. Well, I've never found that makes any difference at all. It always says that. <laughs> Obviously, my computer's getting long in the tooth. Right, now, uh, let's, um, shall we progress to having a look at possibly what you thought about the results, um, of some results that you've done. Mm -hmm. And I know that Alan's done some, and I know that David has sent me some. So, would anyone like to show me what you have done? Yes, okay, right, we'll start, shall we? Yep, okay. Right, going into share screen. That's fine. Ah. Yes, let's try with Elizabeth's. Oh, well, that's Elizabeth, right. <laughs> Pogescape, I did this in. Did you? Oh. Yeah. Uh, guitar players in Photoscape, yes, I see. I think those were actually in, in uh, Luca, yeah. when we were in Luca, which is a place where you visited as well, Peter. Oh, you? yes, yes. Uh, are you sure it's in Luca with that tiled thing behind? I'm that... not absolutely certain, but... Okay. Perhaps they were on tour. <laughs> <laughs> Same pair. <laughs> Okay, going on to that's quite 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 nice that with the borders with the uh, drop the drop shadow and things. Yeah. I think it's good with the light color border. It picks up the clothes that they're wearing. Yeah. 
very po a good point yes nice photograph as well mm. if i may say you can almost hear it <laughs> right okay monaco outside you know grace kelly and prince rena's palace in the old days right yes all done in photo escape yep yeah, yep yeah, that's um quite well timed his arms up and he's got two legs apparently yes <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so easy to get the arm in the wrong place, the swinging arm in the wrong place. Okay, thank you. Very good. Very good. A soldier, yes. Soldier, Monaco. Oh, that's one of the doors in uh, Madeira. Um, Funchal, isn't it? Yeah. And how was that done? That was done in Photoscape as well. Those right, okay. Were done there and then the others in another one. I've got the corners chopped off, yes. Yes, mm -hmm. something was different. Yes. Just, uh, a photograph into a... Mm -hmm. Into a whatever older thing. Yeah. I think that's quite good. Don't know what the record is there. I don't <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's in the Canaries. I did that. Or Madeira, I think, as well. That was Fast Stone Viewer. That was outside the shop, wasn't it? Frame mask. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I did different uh, frames for this, but you might not agree with them. But uh... no, I think that's all right. That's different. Mm -hmm. Quite like that one. And then I did a different one with the box one in the same thing. Oh, I see. Yes. So there, what you call window? Looks good. Hmm. That, 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 well, I think that building is in La Corona, the port. And that one is using Fast Stone Viewer, was it? Hmm. Yeah, thought, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. So what effect is that called then? Um, I think it's, I don't know, it's, it's about number 78 or something. <laughs> oh, right, okay. <laughs> I think it's called a swirl. It could, like, I call it a swirl. Oh, it? It, yes, yes, I did see that, I think. Yeah, yeah quite an interesting effect, I think. That. Yeah, so I try to do something a bit different, but... Morning, Peter. Morning, everybody. Sorry I'm late. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> it's just that I cannot get my uh, Mac to work very well. It takes ages to get the, uh, the mouse and the, and the keyboard to work. Oh. So I have to turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, then eventually it works. Oh, all right, okay. <laughs> well, we've just we've just seen uh, <coughs> Elizabeth uh, borders, uh, border images, and I'm presuming we're going to go to see Rogers now in a moment. <clears throat> That's brilliant, I have to say that one. What the swirly one? Yeah. <laughs> There you are, Elizabeth. Praise for you. I know I don't get it very often. <laughs> make the, make the most of it. <laughs> right. Well, you may be um, excused for thinking this is a black border, but actually, <laughs> it is the photograph as I took it. And what I've done is use the same photograph for several borders. So that's just the photograph I took in Swanage about a month ago, I suppose. Okay. Right. Oh, really? Right. And. The borders I've done are actually made in Photoshop. And that is the first one, which is called a block mount. It's yep. done with layers in Photoshop. Right, Photoshop, right, okay. So you've got complete control over obviously all the colors and the width of the <clears throat> and the drop shadow and so on. So what do you think of the, the, why do you choose that greenish border? Well, only, yeah, I, I chose it because one of the boats were just here. And, yes, I can see that one, I, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying it, it, it's a particularly good colour for it, what I'm saying is. <laughs> <laughs> I would have thought the blue would have been better perhaps, but yeah. anyway. Just to say that you can obviously pick out colours from anywhere, from the clouds or. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Right. You've, got, you've got to make it harmonise, that's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. 
or, well, or, or be completely different. Um, so it could have been, say, red, or no, that would be too wild. But uh, <laughs> the colour from the boat on the left, the corner, it, you could say it is harmonising, couldn't you? Yes. Hmm. All right. All in the eyes of the beholder, people. I know that. <laughs> yeah. This is a, variant, a variation on a the theme, really. It isn't. Oh, yeah. Yeah, now that one is done in a similar way, um, but that is a matte, a matte finish. It's called a matte frame. And instead of, actually, the shadow is on the inside, you can probably see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I put some texture, I think it's burlap, on the outside of the frame. Right, yes. You can I like do that shadow in. Sorry? I like that shadow in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do that in iPicky, of course, as well. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, and then just to demonstrate, you can change the cutter very easily. I did that, which I hate. Oh, ah, yes, yes. But, no, right. but again, it's taken from the boat on the left hand. <laughs> You're getting obsessed with it. <laughs> See. <laughs> so those are all the same picture taken with different frames. Do you think, Roger, that it makes an uh, improvement to have a border? Um, yes, I think it. Well, it depends, doesn't it? Really, it depends what you're doing it for, I suppose, isn't it? I mean, you don't actually see any. Um, Pictures with borders like that in camera club competitions, do you? No, no, we're not. We're not. We're not in a camera club at the moment. Yeah, no, um, if you're going to publish that, print that, for instance, in, and make a book with all these in. Oh yeah, yeah, certainly. I think I, I think that would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see you've got a white line as well, uh, a pin line, very yeah. much around the inside there. I think that's important. That white line. Mm. Anyway, this one is done in Photosculpture with a frame mask. Ah, well done. Because it's a painterly effect, I thought that maybe that broken frame mask uh, is appropriate for that particular picture. Yep, I think so. That's, that's very good. Yes, it fitted in the, just about fitted in the lamp post, uh, the top of the lamp, I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, the next or the, the last two, just two that I did some little while ago during the lockdown when uh, I was doing a following Barry Beckham, who was doing a thing on presentation skills. Yes, that was one. Ah, oh, that's that's very nice. Yes, what do you call those things? Um, you know, we've got them outside our, our front door. Yeah, now, another thing to, it, the the fleck on the Grey on the on the frame. That's, yes, that's done with digital noise. Oh, is it? Yes. Yeah. Make that as big, or obviously bigger, or, or as small as you as you wish. There are several ways of doing it, of course. Yes, and that's one of them. <laughs> yeah. And the last one is another one. Which actually, you showed the other day, but it, it's my picture. It's my <laughs> picture. <laughs> yeah, I will allow it. Yes. <laughs> And it's got some digital noise on again, just to make the frame look a bit different. Yes. Uh, if you go to the pattern, uh, uh, set of patterns that Photoshop produced, they've got patterns with, with speckly bits on as well. Mm -hmm. And there's whole varieties of that there. Mm -hmm. It might be easier to use that than, than what you've done. I don't know. I expect it's, I expect it's it. relatively simple to do what you've done. Right, lovely. Um, that's Madeira, was it again? No, that one was in uh, Portugal, and I'm trying to think of the name of the place now. Oh, God. Well, I can't tell you. It'll come to me. Probably come to me later. We'll that's call it the Algarve. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> right. And uh, what have we got next? That's, uh, you've done your lot. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing now. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Who would like to go next, I wonder, if anyone? I've got some. <laughs> okay, Terry, far away. How many have you got? Much of interest? Uh, three, I think it is. Right. Yes, we don't want too many, do we? Right, that's the original photograph. Right. And I've used it, this for the, all the same 
um, with the borders. Um, now this one I've used um, Fast Stone Viewer, and I like this one better than the other ones that I've done. Just a subtle um, white and black border. Yep. That's Very nice. simple to do. Indeed. Um, this one in Photoscape, oh, I yeah. tried doing something similar. Um, not quite, not as easy to use, and I don't like that one as much as um, the Fast Stone Viewer one. Right, yes, I can see what you mean. The black is not, not really enough, is it, the black line? But I used what I thought was the same parameters to try and get the same effect. And right. Terry, when you, when you my say, last one. Oh, no, hold on a minute, Terry. Terry when you say not as simple to use, um, in, in Photoscape, uh, you're not actually using um, ones that have already been done in that case, you're creating your own. Is that what you're saying? Um, no, it, this is ones, um, the Photoscape and the, um, the other one, uh, Fast Stone Viewer, that they're available within um, both those packages. And um, I can't remember what they were called. It's just looping down through frames that are available. Yeah. I think it's very easy actually in, in Photoscape because loads and loads of them, aren't there? But anyway, okay. Well, I didn't find that as easy as Fast Stone Viewer, to be quite honest, Roger. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And my right. last one is was done in um, uh, Photoshop. Now, unfortunately, with the black background, you can't see it properly. Um, I'd have to change the background. <clears throat> it should be a white border, then with a black border. Right. And okay. and where I'd done it on my screen, um, I, I'd set a very blue back screen so that I could see it. And I didn't like the effect as much in Photoshop as either of the other two, albeit that it was relatively easy in merely extending the canvas um, by the white. And I added 20, pix 20 pixels, I think. Um, and then um, what you do is you pull that, that layer down underneath the background layer. Then I, I flattened the layers and then I, I provided a black one on the outside exactly the same. And I didn't like that quite as much as the other two. Hmm. Yes, right, okay. Well, thank you very much, Terry. Um, <clears throat> um, I've got some if you want to see them. Oh, right, yes, come on, Peter. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm afraid they're all done in iPicky, so. Um... so okay, that's all right. I'm, <laughs> I'm glad people use iPicky. <laughs> Mine were all done in iPicky, except the <laughs> one or two in Photoshop. Can you see that? Yep. Um, well, that I've, I've used the same picture all the time. I've only got four, I think. Yeah, OK. Stonehenge. So um, uh, a double board or whatever it's called. So that was, <sighs> yeah, right. I'm with you. Yes. <laughs> and you've got, you've got it dark on the inside, haven't you? on the inside uh, yeah. of yeah, somehow yeah excellent so that's yeah that's very good yes and that's, that's called a mirror frame or something yes yes i've used that quite a lot that's so. which i thought was sort of interesting a bit boring but interesting <laughs> <laughs> well you you're supposed to be experimenting and making it interesting <laughs> Somehow, no, I am experimenting. I, I just get a bit frustrated sometimes that I, I can't <laughs> do what I want to do. Yes, I, I, well, I never leave myself enough time. That's that's the problem. I see. So, um, hmm. Hmm. what can I'm, one say? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. Peter, are these presets in um, in iPicky? Are they ones that are already set set up for you? Yes, I mean you, you can choose all the colours and, and 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 the you know the the width of the frame and all that sort of thing. So it's it, it's just it's called a double. Uh, this is called a mirror frame, and it, mm -hmm. there's loads to to choose from. And you can change the colours and you can you know make the um, the mirror um, more prominent or not. Um, so more, it, more or less shiny. I mean more or less shiny. Yeah. Mm. 
So did you have to join up or sign up with them to get this mirror one? Because I had to do that. Um, Diana, I can't remember. I, I know I, I think I signed up right at the very beginning when I when I uh, first downloaded iPicky, but I, I didn't. I, I don't have to do it every time. It, it just comes so, up. Yeah, I looked at iPicky. I used it quite a lot, but the one that I really liked the look of was this mirror one, and it yeah. wouldn't let me do it. So then I had to sign up with them. Oh. They didn't want any money. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's right. The most important thing. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that one it's quite painless diana <laughs> <laughs> and there's there's that one which i i did the um the photograph in um photoshop elements and then it's the same mirror frame oh i see which I... so the blocks um that you've got there were done in photoshop elements yeah, yeah. right i'm with you yes and you can choose all sorts of things in there, you know, to fill up these little gaps and I don't know. Anyway, and then that's the last one. So you can see I use the same photograph um, each time, but. Mm. Oh, I see. Well, I haven't looked at one. Oh, that's interesting. Yes. So I see. Oh, clever. Anyway, that's, that's my lot. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's that's almost um, typography there, isn't it? it is, well, it is. Yes, it is typography. Mm -hmm. um, again, you can experiment with all these. You know, the the, the depth of these uh, borders and the colour. When I say typography, I mean typology, don't I? Yeah, typology. That's it. That's it. Anyway, that's my lot, Peter. Thank you very much, Peter. Very good. Burns too much, Peter. Have you? Uh, <laughs> stop share. There you go. That's right. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> let's come on. Let's have a look at your eye picky ones, Diana. <laughs> yeah, it looks follow on quite well. Um, Good. Hang on. Oh, the, the dustmen are outside collecting the bins. <clears throat> Rocky, yeah. ours came at seven o'clock this morning. Well, they've only just is come. That, is that? Looking right on your screens? Well, yeah. yes, it looks very good. Okay, so that's the top of Mount Kinabalu in Borneo. And oh. I got up there. I, I started walking up after a rest at two o'clock in the morning and got there for sunrise. So this frame I did in Photoshop. And I was okay with that until I started do it fiddling around in eye picky. Right, okay. So that's very similar, but it picked, oh, yeah. it's picking up two different colours around. It's not as dark as the previous one. Right, got that one, basic, yep. And then I did, this was the mirror one. Uh -huh. And I think that makes it look a bit 3D, especially on the right hand side. I think that's quite good, actually. I'm surprised, so, it, yes. I, I think thought that's it... probably my favourite. Yes, yes. And then I was just playing around with colours, and it's not my favourite colour, but I just thought I'd try this one out. It's called a drop shadow. Yes, getting the colours right for borders is is actually quite important. But that that orange does at least match the uh, the light on the mountain top, does it not? Mm. Yeah, I, I suspect that's where you got it from. <laughs> <laughs> probably did and then in a another part of the world that's Mount Makalu which is the mm. fifth highest in the Himalayas mm. and that's so you've been up you've been up there as well I didn't go to the top of it I, <laughs> I, I was sleeping out at like minus 20 in a tent oh. and it was really murky and then I looked out and then the clouds all separated and there was this mountain in front of me and it was Mount Makalu. Amazing. And I was just, this is quite a few years back now, it was just like amazing to see it. And ever since then, everything's looked a bit smaller. So that was done in Photoshop. What's the geology like there? Um, <laughs> it's a bit tectonic. Coming to, uh, they're coming together, the, the Himalayas. Right. Well, we had a, an interesting U3A 
uh, meeting this week on the on geology and how to um, how to figure out what the rocks are actually made of. Think all the tests you do when on geological samples, like tasting mm. it. Tasting it was the first one. And then feeling what it's like, whether it's soapy or rough or whatever. And then you could do the uh, s uh, specific gravity test, which I thought was most interesting. Mm -hmm. you, you know that one, I presume? Yeah, yeah. I don't actually do that, but uh, where <laughs> I do my voluntary work, they some of them do it. And then we did some tests with hydrochloric acid, which was the most fascinating, if you like. Fumes mm. coming off everywhere. <laughs> That's for carbonates. You're right. Dead right. That's chalk and yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. The taste, to... one, the taste one is for uh, salt. Right. Anyway, Mostly. I'm sorry to dis, dis, um, interrupt your uh, flow. <laughs> right. Um, so this one's I picky. And oh, the museum map. Been playing with different frames. That one was interesting. It looks like a television, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I used two, two things in iPicky for that. I did uh, rounded corners and then added a basic frame around it. Oh, yeah, a plus two, I see. Yes. Yes, I always think the rounded corners look a bit old-fashioned, but... Uh, that's yeah, just... it does. Uh, the um, the so, vignette, oh, yes. Yes, and that was... It blended with the image. It made this sort of, like, blue, <clears throat> blue effect around it, round... Oh. Oh, yes, you've got the, the option of blending with the image and not blending with the image mm. on the vignette. <clears throat> um, right, we're in Peru now, oh, in South America. That's, that bird liked to show off and he sat for about half an hour while I clipped away on my camera. So that Break. one was the one that I did first, actually, in Photoshop. And oh. then I did... Oh, I the a double frame again in iPicky. Right, we're and busy. That's, that's but did you do one up. frame and then save it and then do another frame? Yeah. Oh, okay. It just, um, I, I did it accidentally, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so then I thought, oh, actually, that's a good idea. So I tried that one and then I did another double frame on that one. And oh, I brought yes. out the blue a bit more. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, that's quite good, that one. I like that one. Yeah. So that's a, oh, gosh. <laughs> extra it's the mirror bit. again. It seems to work. And he yeah. looks like he's sort of coming out the picture a little bit, 3D again. Now, I notice on the right hand, uh, to, but not, uh, so I suppose you can't tell. I'm going to say that it's blurred on the right hand side, but then, then it's not on the left. And then the bird itself yeah, is blurred. I think blurred. it's just the way the picture mm. is that it's um, bouncing off. Okay, right. And this is near home. This is an old steam train. Uh, we had a outing there to, uh, with the camera club to go and just take photos of bits of old train. And I quite like that frame round. It's just very simple, but it it's um, I think it works. But then I did another one in iPicky, which is quite bright. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> too bright. It brings out the three colours in the picture. I think colors. the other one is better with just yeah. the red line that picks out the red on the Yeah, track. I like that. Yeah, I like that as well. That, that's yeah. sort of like, I, called, I gave that a title of Out of Darkness. Yes, that's very good. Yes, I, I like that one too. Yes. I think that's it. That's it then. Well done. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. That was very nice. Um, now then, Alan, you've got some, haven't you? Uh, yeah. Um, I know you've got them because I've got them on my computer now. Jolly good. Do you want me to um, show, well, show them for you? <laughs> yeah, I, I've got one that you won't have, um, but you show them. Um, basically, uh, as you realise, I've been otherwise occupied this last week or two, so um, things have gone slightly askew. <clears throat> and Maureen oh. said, what have what's the theme for today in frames and I hadn't at that stage done anything <laughs> and in fact this morning we were laying in bed um picking out pictures Maureen on her iPad and me on my iPhone and just using um the Mac process to put some frames on well done so, well done so uh, 
it was more a, a learning process rather than trying to make a decent picture out of them. But well, if, that, you show, yeah. if you show the ones that um, Maureen has sent, then I'll uh, I'll screen share afterwards and just show the last one. It's only uh, yeah, OK, right, I'll do that. If I can get to the right point. Um, I'll just click on here. Come on, that's it. Have you got the first one there? Yeah, the fuchsias. The yes. fuchsias, yes. So, um, so fuchsias, yes. How do you solve fuchsia? Um, <laughs> what did you do with that then? Uh, well, that's one that Maureen did. I mean, they're all the same <laughs> process. <laughs> okay, what was the process then? Uh, well, if I can remember, um, let me see. Let, uh, I'll just get the pictures up and try and talk myself through it. Um, <laughs> so you select a picture on your um, phone and go to edit. And then you go to the three buttons, the three dots, um, which gives options um, and go on to markup. Uh, then you, um, oh, what did we do then? Um, oh, I've forgotten how we did it now, to be honest, bearing in mind it was only an, about half an hour ago. So uh, um, ah, I, I need to work my way through the process. Um, <laughs> Let's go to the next picture. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Can't have that one. <laughs> That's you, Terry, on the left there. I can yes. see. Yeah. That's when we were at the old ale house. That's right. Yeah, again. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Peter's got his weapons in hand, you see. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And who took that? Maureen. Uh, Maureen took that uh, one. I thought so. The angle of it. And, uh, ah, yes, a double border, triple border, quadruple yeah. border. Okay. One, two, three borders. Yes, yeah, three borders. Yeah. I can see it's a foxglove. Yeah. And Love in the Mist. Yes, that's they're probably in our were in our garden when they were in. <clears throat> so that was just the same repeated thing, was it? Yeah. 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 Uh, and there's that last one here. Yeah. Which is like your first one, a tree. Yes. Tree, right? Okay. That, that's the last one I've got. Right. Um, so does it, does it select the colours, Alan, or do you have to? Select... You can select them, uh, and it brings up a, a, a palette. Uh, and you pick whichever one you want, um, which is what I did with, uh, can you, um, let's close that down, that down, that down, that down. So hopefully you can see Dianthus. Yes. Yeah, yes. so uh, that was the, the um, one that I did. Um, just, I mean, it was a more, uh, learn the process rather than uh it was more a question of learning the process rather than trying to get a decent picture out of it is this done on the smartphone yeah right okay yeah so i haven't that, tried that, that that's that's it well i haven't tried using a smartphone to do borders but yeah. it obviously works yeah Rather simple borders, um, but yes, you get, they are. Yeah, you did get a triple border, which is <laughs> yeah, that was that one, simple. Yeah, that was done on an iPad, so I don't know whether there's more options. Oh, no. right. Now I've got just some. Keep, just keep putting borders on. She's saying. <laughs> oh yes, right. Let me just tell. Where are we? Oh uh, yes, um, just got now. I've got to find um, where David's pictures are. This was uh, Di Plus. Um, somewhere, borders, here we go, I should be sharing with you in a moment, I think, you're not sharing it, are you, right, starting to share, here we go, oh. right, this is what David Meesner showed, uh, she sent to me, these are the ones I had to, I got eight of them, I think, I think this is the college, isn't it? Mm. Uh, so he's got one there, and you, you see it at the top. It says 35 millimeter film border, which is I don't know how he did these. I get that he guess he did them somewhere in Photoshop, I suspect. And there's that one, which is called antique rounded border. 
uh, with 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 got shading inside, doesn't he? Uh, any comments at all? No, right. Uh, he did this one called Antique. Hmm. I don't know how he got that. What program is he using, Peter? Photoshop, I think. Photoshop, oh, okay. I don't know if it's my screen, but um, looking at the right hand face of the building on the previous photo, it looked darker with a darker background. It is fairly dark on the right, yes. It seems to be the same darkness in all the pictures so far. Yeah. Anyway, that one is, is made, is, is even got a dark surround, <laughs> make it even darker still. Yeah. yeah. So I think the actual image changes size when we do that. So he's it obviously expanded the the um, canvas to do that, and it's called uh, Hol Holger Color Black Square Key Line Border. Mm. I don't know what the Holger bit means. Does that mean anything to any people that use Macintosh computers? No. No. Okay. And there's another one. And that's called Holger Color Brush Border. Mm. Yes. Mm. In the old days, in the dark room, we used to get brushfuls of various chemicals and brush them onto plain paper, and we got that sort of effect. So that's where it all comes from. <laughs> when we used to do um, what they called um, other types of printing. Yes. Um, what's it called? Oh dear, forgotten. This one's called. Uh, Holger color ghosted black and white border. I've just um, searched on Wikipedia for Holger. Yes. It appears to be a medium <laughs> format camera. A what? A medium? A medium format camera. Oh, I see. Right. If that is any relevance, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know either. I never heard of it as a camera. Oh, right. No. Uh, Anyway, that um, I don't think that one works really, do you? Do you? What do no. you think? No. <laughs> Why doesn't it work? Because the color. It it doesn't it doesn't show out it doesn't um doesn't bring out the building. It's just yeah. The, the border seems to run out down the right hand side. Yes, it, yes of course it does. Yes, because it's all black down there anyway. Yes. Oh, yes, right. goes through it goes through the glass at the top as well <laughs> yes yes it's all wrong isn't it that one <laughs> and that one's not much better what he what this he says here holger color original and that one i think that's the last one oh no, it's not there's one more um this is called holger color sloppy one border <laughs> <laughs> well, he's like... probably he's probably done them so you know, just to show the difference between them rather than to yes. get a masterpiece. Well, he did. Right. He, the did one that he, wasn't good. He, he did ask me to select the ones and I decided not to select them. <laughs> I just I'll just show you them all. <laughs> Warts and all, as they say. OK, right. <laughs> Before we leave the subject, Roger, would you mind emailing Maureen your picture of the old garb so that she could use it in the next newsletter? Orleans, yeah. It's it's actually it's Sintra. I remember oh, yeah. Sintra. Oh, you've remembered. Hmm. So you if go. you could uh, bung that on an email to her and ping it off, then uh, yeah. she'll get it in the next newsletter. Right. <clears throat> right. I'm moving on now to the next topic. Why haven't I written it down? Oh, I have written it down. I have. Yes, the new topic. Yes, a new topic, which is called typography as opposed to typology. <laughs> this is going to cause confusion, isn't it? <laughs> Any idea what the, the difference is? Typography. Well, well, one, give us a clue. One, one's looking at a typewriter and the other <laughs> studying how it's done it. Well, the typology one we did, we <laughs> had a series of similar things of the same type put into an array, okay? And then typography is the, 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 the science of the um, making print, the fonts and the so forth that go on with it. 
And there are lots of fonts, as you don't know, I'm sure. Um, and I thought we could have a go at that. Now, let me try and show you some of the images I've already tried out on this. If I can find out where I've done them. Um, uh, down here, typography, here we go. Um, can you see that one? I mean, I'm not sharing, am I? I've just realized I'm not sharing again. Uh, keep forgetting to do that. So that should be, oh, I've mucked it up, I think. Can you see that picture? Yes. Yes. That was uh, a sort of my sister here, whose birthday is on the 8th of December. <clears throat> I think I sent that last year. Anyway, <laughs> this is what um, I sent her as a, a little picture. And that was a nice border done um, uh, as well. But the, the font, the font and the typeface and all that down on the bottom right. And all of that was done in iPicky. The background is a cinema in in uh, Bridport mm. called the Electric Cinema, I think it was. It's it done in it's still done in the 1930s. It's as original in the 1930s. Um, and the camera was well, it's not working. It's not working. What's wrong? What's wrong? <gasps> I have to stop sharing, won't I? It's just suddenly stopped working. Um, now it's working. What's the matter with it? But I'll start again. I'll get back to you, back to share, back to that, and then to that, and then to that. Let's see if that one works. Right. <clears throat> this is one that I haven't done anything with yet. It's all prepared uh, for, for type to go in the bottom here. You see what I mean? Yep. This is the this is our Salisbury Fair that we had earlier this week. This was on Sunday evening, and it was fairly mild, uh, as you can tell by the uh, the stomach here. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> um, uh, this is a photograph um, that I think is of far north Queensland. I don't know. There's a there's a bat down here. If you notice, <laughs> I use that on my daughter's web page. Uh, called FNQ Neuropsychology, and I put it all across the top. Anyway, that's one thing. And then I did. Oh, there you are. There's one. There's a little bit of font um, typography that I did, um, and this can be done in Photoshop Elements or proper Photoshop. Probably other programs as well. But I made it a, wa a wavy line. This was. Uh, Another one I found in the fair, this nice doggy here. And I put this looking at the fair on the right hand side here. And that was all done in uh, iPicky, I think. Yes. Um, so an example of that one. This, I don't know, in, in one of the local parks, Victoria Park, I think, there's a, there's a, sn a stone snake. That is to say, around the base of a tree, there's a whole set of pebbles like this, all painted by children. And there must be a hundred at least. And I photographed quite a number of them. And this is just one. And it had this frame in it. So I thought I'll use a frame. And I now put this stone snake text uh, inside it. And you notice it's got a blue border around the, the word, the S, the, all the letters. That's a stroke around the letters. And I thought this one's uh, taken in a wood near Lover, spelt Lover. Huh? And I found these very fancy fonts and I decided to put one on here. And this has got a, um, a stroke of red around it as well. <clears throat> and I rather like the cross in the, in, in the trees there. That's what, it's a, it's a, it's a wood called Tinny's Furs if you know it. <clears throat> I don't suppose you do. Uh, and this was in the fair, <clears throat> as you might imagine. What have I got next? I don't want to, want to sh well, well, I'll go forwards. Oh, yes. Wh wh right. Which program do you use for the fancy fonts? That's a good question. Uh, what did I use for that? Um, isn't life terrible when you can't remember these things? It might have been Photoshop. I'll, I'll see if I can remember later. <clears throat> um, anyway, that was this one uh, I did with um, 
definitely did in Photoshop Elements. And I was following, the, I see the text is all curved, both sides. <clears throat> they're two separate texts on two separate layers and they're done in different ways. It's the one on the left is, is as you can see, is, is graded in color and it's is, uh, is got various shapes to the text, rounded shapes. which is all available in Elements quite easily. And this one on the right also in Elements where you get this depressed effect called a style. And there's, there's, there's lots and lots of variations of text and ty ty typography. Um, this was another one done in, this was definitely done in iPicky. So I managed to get these, um, uh, these stars and things. Um, what do they call those? The effect of these stars. So as you can see, I've colored them, graded the colors. They weren't just straight uh, as, as out, of, out of the um, program. I modified them. And the, the word, the Salisbury Fair, I put this uh, red text with yellow borders around the outside, and then I rounded the corners off for you as well. And I think that's all I've got as examples. There they all are. Um, so the trick now is to show you how to do all that. <clears throat> Isn't it? So, shall I start with? Um, I start. I start going back to here, for instance. Oh, go go to that that particular picture here. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing, can you? I keep forgetting you can't see everything. Um, so, I go back to sharing this first photograph. Oh, that one there. So you can see that picture there. And now, if I want to open that in Elements, <clears throat> uh, we're in we're in uh, Fast Stone Viewer here, and in there I can just um, go to press the letter E, and it will open it in Elements. All in good time. There it is. So that's oh, you can't see it. No, I can't see it. I keep forgetting you can't see things like that. Uh, let me see if I can do a a, a new share on top. So that will be that one. Yes. So you should see a photograph of elements open now. Is that right? Yes. Yep. And uh, on the bottom, you can see uh, the history and information, all that, and an extra little box, which yep. I don't really like. I must admit, this. I'm not, I like to drag the history out and then shrink it by double-clicking the word and then dragging it down to the bottom here, and it should nest it, nestle into there, but it, it's not doing it, is it? Because I haven't got... I think I've got to open this first. Um, custom workspace. So then I've got to go back to here and get the history out again. Uh, um, so I'll drag that down to, uh, you know, as a little blue line appears, doesn't it? Yes, there it goes. So now I've, I've nestled it in here. Um, and I can do actions as well if I wanted I'm doing that as Peter, well. Peter, how do you link the iPicky to other applications? Oh. You said using um, e fast, fast, fast Stone Viewer. This is Fast Stone Viewer. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, it's Fast Stone Viewer. Yeah, if, if I right click on that, if it works, come on, right click. I don't know whether you can see that, can you? I'll probably switch back again. And keep going to go to switch yet again. Um, it's not working right. Why is, it, why is it not working? Oh, that's better. New share again. Go back to Fast Stone Viewer, which I think is that one. You should have my fast stone viewer screen. Is that right? Yes. And if you, I think you can probably do it a different way, can't you? Um, I use favorites quite a lot. As we can see all these down oh, here. Okay. And there's typology here, you see, which is this, 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 this thing, but I could go to what we did, uh, composition imperfect, for instance, and you see all those pictures instead. Um, it's a very quick, quick way of doing it, I find. Anyway, um, that's one thing I like about uh, Fast Stone Viewer. I can save pictures straight into these folders, or I can do it in a two-step. Anyway, I mean, that's what we're trying to do. I'm trying to show you how to get to another, open it in a different place. Um, I'm in the wrong folder, aren't I? <laughs> wrong favorites. <laughs> Typology. Oh, I'm good in the other. I'm doing type. Typography now, I'm not typology. Fool! <laughs> I'm getting confused myself. 
we're in DI plus. So I'll go up to TI plus. And then from there, I select the one we're doing down here. Uh, well, you're following me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Uh, I still haven't shown you how to do it, have I? Uh, this right click on mine doesn't work all that very well. Very well. Keep... Right click. Oh, on. There, there, I've got it now. Uh, and you see this um, this little subfolder appears, and one says edit with external oh, program. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got it. And you see at the bottom of the right hand bit, it says add and remove programs. Mm. So uh, you could open it with Inkscape or VLC or QuickTime Player or Luminar 3, CS4, Photoscape, GIMP, Raw Therapy or Photoshop or PhotoSketcher or any, any others I might want to add. It's, it's superb. You just have to remember these codes on the left for quick, quickly getting to it. But E is for elements, you see, the first one. I don't seem to have any for these two. They've run out of run out of all ways of getting to it quickly. <laughs> okay, so I just click on elements and up it comes. Um, there's that particular picture again. So oh, all you're doing is creating a shortcut then. Effectively, yes. Yeah. So we're, we're back to this one now. Uh, I don't really want color swatches, do I, at the moment? So I can't see what you're doing, Peter. Oh, oh gosh. Hold on, let's go to new share again. Keep forgetting it. So I have to I keep him to do that. You got? Have you got back to the, um, yep, that's yes. it. the picture of the fair? <clears throat> right, now we're in Photoshop. And if you want to do f uh, text on here or type on here, there's the letter T over here. And if you click on that, uh, you'll get at the bottom a whole array. You can see text on path, it says at the moment. But if you click on the top left, it's type horizontal. Uh, or you could have type vertical, or you could have type horizontal mask, or vertical mask, or this one is uh, type text on selection, and this one is even more interesting, is um, text on shape. And the one I had at the moment is text on custom path. Um, but if we'll start with the simple one first, text on a path. <clears throat> And you see it's given us a, a font already, Rubik. Out of all of the fonts in here, that happens to be chosen Rubik. Um, quite a lot to choose from. Um, and you could see the samples on the right here. So we could have these in Chinese script. <laughs> I don't know what would happen. Or, or um, uh, what is this, Israeli, Hebrew, uh, and so on. So I don't, I don't think we want those, do we? So we'll choose one where we can actually understand. Rubik was, was quite a good one. It's a fairly simple font. So you can have it as, now when we're talking about fonts and so forth, there are various weights you can do. This it says regular here, but if you tip on that, you get italic, bold, and bold italic. <laughs> you can see a sample of each of those on the right. Is it but, a cute basis? Sorry? Is it a cubed basis? Cubed? Yeah. Rubik cubed. Rubik's. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. I expect it is, yes. <laughs> then you've got the font size, the, 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 and I've got it on the maximum. Uh, now, 72 points means that the text uh, you print will be one inch high because in the font technology, one point is equal one to one seventy second of an inch. So 72 point is one inch high font. OK. And then on top of that, we've got this thing on the left to give you the, the way that it works out, whether it's centralized or left hand side and so on. Then you've got the color of the font. And this is where we get all these font things here. These happen to be the color swatches default, but you've got Mac ones, photo filter ones, web hues. If you're putting it on a website, then web safe colors is a good one to choose, but it's a very limited range, but quite a good range. Not much green. Oh, I suppose there are greens. Let's choose a green, shall we? Oh, I chose that, I chose that one. Yes. Okay. So you can choose a color like that. Then it's got here this one that says, looks like leading, but it's actually pronounced leading because it comes from the original things when they used to use lead to produce type. 
and leading is the distance between lines. So you can have that again from, from six point up to one inch, 72 point. Or you could have it automatic. Automatic is the usual one. But if we choose, if we choose one, let's say uh, nine point, but we have 72 point text, then when we do some type, you'll see that that's not really a very good idea. But, so we've, we've typed that bit. We've now got, what do we do next? We've got the, the cursor here. And we can we can actually inscribe a box. It's not working. Go to the hand. It's better. What we want, I think, is that, isn't it? No, that's not what we want. Um, lock. Oh, I see. I need a need a non-lock background. So I do Control J to get a second copy. Let's see if that works. No. <laughs> How embarrassing. So that's better. You should get this T-shaped thing here. There are two ways of doing fonts, a type. You can either click on here like that and then start typing like that. OK, that's version one. Or you can click and drag and drag yourself a box. And when you do that, you can then, uh, well, you can do things like rotate the box. You notice you can turn it like that. So you can do fonts like that, and then you can type within that. So let's have, uh, uh, so I'll start typing of the fair, something like that, fair. So I've, <clears throat> I've done some there. It's comp that's what seventy-two points mean. If I do carriage return with the uh, the, the leading has gone back to auto. Let's go back to ten. Now to a carriage return and start another line. One, you see that it's on top of it because it's so small uh, a, a, um, a leading. So you need a much bigger leading. Let's make it 60. And I'll have to erase what we've done. Go back to that. Go, well, if it's on auto, you'll see the effect. So one, it's just, that's the sort of spacing you get with 70, the automatic leading. So let's just see, why isn't it, that's right. I'll just get rid of that, go back to here, change this to a more suitable, it's like 48. Let's see if it says on now. You see it's much closer, but it's not completely clashing with the text. So if you want to get the font, the, the typeface close to each other, then um, change the leading. And you, it might look as if you've only got um, uh, 72 is the maximum. You might want it to go more. What do you do then? Well, we'll find out later, I expect. So there you are. There's, there's, two way, there's one way of doing it within a box. Uh, and you can change the box shape, I think. Well, I can move it, of course. Um, so you could leave it like that. So then as you look at the top right, you'll see that there's a layer for that that's automatically created. The thing about text is when you press the letter T on the box on the left, you get a new layer for when you're doing it. Let's try changing the font to something like Toledo. And then we'll do, a, a, we'll still keep it green. We'll put it centralized. We'll do it direct. Um, the fair again for want of a word. word have I spelled that right? Yes. Now you can see the difference in the font there. Now we may want to, uh, if we click OK, there it is. Now if you look at the top right, it's up there again. It's fixed up there with a separate layer. The, the, second, the one that's blue. If I click on the box itself, it highlights it. Now, having done that, you know, then I think, yes, you can, if it didn't work, yes. You can do control T, having done that, you can then increase the size of the font without going, so you're well beyond 72 now, okay? And of course you can, you can angle it, or whatever you want. And since it's in the, uh, I do a right click, which doesn't work on my computer very well. Um, 
perhaps I can do it up here, transform, um, free transform on skew. If you did skew, for instance, you could then should shift that up like that, um, as well as rotate. But you know all that, of course, with skew. So you can do various things after you've typed in. That's the important thing to remember. This one, which I've already done, may be more difficult to control, but we've still got the, if I dub, double click on the, should get that, you still can do that. Let me just try and get that to work. Uh, why doesn't it? <laughs> Sometimes a bit treacherous to get it right, even with a mouse. Oh, I got it. So I've shrunk it back a bit and I want to move it a bit. So use the move tool. So can I do more with that? Um, I should be able to expand it like we did the other one, shouldn't we? But it doesn't do it. You see, it's different. It doesn't increase the font size once you've done it. Whereas if you do it direct, you can get this effect where you can actually change the font size as well. Try it again on that. Uh, where I can't see it. Control T, Control T, right. If I stretch it upwards and stretch it vertically, the text, or shrink it back down. So you've got pretty, pretty good um, uh, variations on what you can do with a, with a simple, straightforward text. Right, Ab? Okay, that makes sense. And uh, let's see if I can get a different picture from the I picky from the uh, fast stone view. We'll go to this one. Uh, the uh, you should see a different picture now. Yes. Do, you, do you see my? I think it's the same as that one. Is it? Yes, it's just already got it open. Yes. Anyway, right. Um, right. I'm just go back to this one for a moment. Yes. Okay, right. Um, so here we have a picture. We want to put a, a text across the top, perhaps, and another one at the bottom. If we click on the little T again to get the font shape, we could do the one that's vertical, for instance. And when that happens, you can see that the, the eye shape beam is now horizontal instead of as it was before with this one. It's vertical. So that's the difference there. Um, so if you now select what we've got, Toledo, let's change the font. I think it's a bit feeble, that font. Um, let's go to, uh, uh, yeah, so if I do this one, for instance, crazy, crazy look BTN in line, right? <laughs> uh, so the, you see what's happening here? So it, because I've got it on centralized, it's swept itself off the top of the page. So what you've got to have is, is the, left hand um, one there. Now what's happened of course is that it's typing vertically um, and we've got just two words of the far. So if you, you could click on that and leave it there. You could put it down on the sand so you can see it. You can do all the same things we did before with, uh, with, with selecting the size and the rotation. I, I do control T I think to shrink it down a bit to fit in. Okay, I might shrink it sideways as well. Right, there you are. So put that in there. Uh, I wonder if we could um, do the uh, effects. If we, I think that might work. No, it's, I always get this wrong. I always forget how to do it. It's, um, there should be the word um, effects and styles on the bottom left. And I can never seem to get it to work properly. And that doesn't show me. Oh, no, that's not. No. Where is it? Where's it all gone? Always the way when you're trying to do things in demonstrations. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll come back to that, I think. View, it might be up here, mind it. Um, um, yeah, it might not as well. Adjustments, swatches, effects, effects was what we're trying to do, but it's not. Those are brush styles. It does that to me and it goes bling, bling, bling and doesn't like it. So I never know quite what I'm doing wrong. 
So how do I get out of that? Just the layers panel, Peter. I think it probably is layers, is it? That does it? No. It's, oh, I've got back to layers. Yes, it's getting to the effects here that I'm trying to do. Can it go into the adjustment layers? Adju adjustment layers? You mean that one of these? I don't think that's going to help. That does solid colors and gradients and levels and so on. Uh, or if you go to enhanced, it's all. Layer styles, then. Eh? I'm just looking at layers at the moment. Layer styles where it says normal. So. Whereabouts is that? Well, where it says normal at the top. Oh, I see, yes. Styles, I'm They're okay. just blending modes, aren't they? Blending modes, yeah. Oh, no, no, there's the, this, this, this effects here I want to do, and I can never quite remember how to do it. This, this one does a good trick of making it. So if you select these letters and then click one of these, that works a treat. Um, so if I go to see select, is that the one? Yes, that's the move tool, isn't it? Well, I think it should select the text. Then if we click on one of these, say that one there, it doesn't like that either, does it? Um, so click that, if I just double click that instead. Ah, there we are. Yes, I thought it might work, yes. So that's selected that particular uh, graphic style. Ah, that's where you do it. This is, it says by type, you can do it by style. That's what I was actually trying to do, I think. This, this brings another whole world to your typeface, uh, type font things. Let's just get another bit of text. We'll do it horizontally. Um, and we'll do it. Um, what's, the, what's the ocean up there? The Pacific? No, the, um, I don't know what it is, the sea. <laughs> Can't think of what. So we've got that word there. And we can then select something like that, an Asian map. And what happens if we double click that when we're doing that there? Well, I've got a map, <laughs> completely <laughs> screwed it up, as you might say. But is it a separate layer? It is a separate layer. I think we can just, no, it isn't a separate layer, is it? It's changed the picture completely. And the back, we've lost the original picture. <laughs> oh, what fun it all is. Let's do, do a bit of unzooming a bit. And if we double, if we do a control J to get make sure we've got a background and then go back to uh, um, obviously graphics, um, show all uh, by text. That's what I was trying to find. Text, he said. Oh, that doesn't work. Backgrounds, that's what we had there, and that was what was wrong. Frames, I oh, can get frames here as well, in case you didn't know. Um, might have interest. I double click it, what do we get? Uh, downloading the asset. Hmm. So we put a picture in there. Oh, it gets more complicated, doesn't it? Um, so that's not what I want. Shapes, graphics, text, text. Why doesn't it show anything? I think it might be taking its time to do, perhaps. Right, this is artistic here. Um, go back to this one shapes got all these shapes we can put in uh cartoon that doesn't take, oh it does have an effect casual very casual yes colorful so yes i see this this system works somewhere and sometimes oh there it's just text and type so what have we got else have we got there Graphics. Right, so here we have graphics as well as type, it says. It's all quite baffling, isn't it? All the variations here they've got. Show all would show nothing at all. That's different. It's frozen itself up. Ah! Oh, it eventually comes. Right. There's a lot down here, I can see, all of them. Oh, that's what you asked me to do. Downloading another asset. 
which I don't want. Yes, isn't that interesting? Yes. Well, I'm not getting very far with that at the moment. Surprising I can forget these things over a single week. <laughs> Where are we? We're, we're doing typeface and we've got this one here. And I was trying to show uh, and, and, and not more effects that I can't seem to figure out at the moment. F effects and styles. Oh, there we go. That's what I was trying to get to. So it's from effects, then styles, and now it works. We've got the bevels and all these other things. <clears throat> so here we have some a font. And here we have a possible bevel. So if we click on that, this will go beveled, he said. I can't really see it. Let's try one with drop shadows. It might be more obvious. Yes, it's got a drop shadow now, and this one doesn't. Do you believe me? <laughs> there you are, you can see it there. So that's drop shadow there, and I presume you can control it by clicking on the, the gear wheel at the top right, like all of these things, and change the angle and the size. Now the size is, is really not the size, it's really a softening of feathering. Distance is what you're most interested in, and the opacity, the nothing to 100% black. And you've got the bevel already on there. We could remove the bevel. And you could add a stroke at this point. So you've added a black stroke from the black thing. But you could add a purple stroke if you wanted. Doesn't look right, does it? <laughs> Go back to black. The black stroke is all right, but <clears throat> it needs to be less black. So once you've got into this mode, the style settings under effects, so it's the effects, styles, and then you've got uh, lots of control over, over this. Let me just move, uh, press, I'll press OK, I think, and put some more text in with, the, with another text thing here. And I'll get a different, a different font. Uh, giddy up, Georgia, Georgia, that'll do, yes. Um, Right, um, there we go. I'll do, I don't know whether that will work. Let's try and do a control T to enlarge it. Okay, there's the basic uh, text. Now if we go back to these, we can put a drop shadow on straight away. Uh, we'll put, which, take that one. We can, did you see that? No. Sorry? Yes. No. You can see it now, good. Right, well, there's all these other things you can do, including these wow ones. And these may not be on your computer. On, they don't come as basic, I don't think. But um, the wow ones are like this. <clears throat> so if you click on one of those, double click, you'll see it goes to a nice metal-shaped metal, -y, metal -shaped one, uh, or that one, or that one, so on. So there are various variations of that. That's Chrome. So there's a neon one as well, which Make sure text looks a bit chrome or like that. So you can have fun with all of that if you've got the wow thing. They're, they're free to download, I think. The plastic ones look a bit like that. Um, and then there's, uh, there's visibility. Well, that's a strange one. I can't quite understand. You've either got that or that or that. Now, who wants that one? Or that one. I don't understand the visibility at all. It's just doesn't make any sense. I don't think photographic effects has much effect either. Um, no, I can't get that to work very well. But, but there's outer glows. Now, that's more interesting. You can have an outer glow to your text like that. Or you can change it to that one. Or that one. Or you can have a nice one like that. And each of these has got controllable from the gear wheel. So you've got all these controls on that that you've now got on there. So the drop shadow we've got is, is uh, overshadowed by all the other things. You can you can move it out though, you can see. And if you do do size, it'll disappear because it goes, it goes fuzzy. And the opacity could be darker. Then there's glow here. 
and we had glow ticked. And that's what it does. And you can change the glow amount, the size of it, the inner glow and the opacity and then the outer glow, which is one we can really see. Okay, and the opacity of that can be changed and the color of it can be changed. So we've got that yellowy color, but we could have a greeny color instead. Then the bevel can be changed. You can see the difference when I do that. There's not much change there as a, a stroke. No, that makes a quite a difference. Why should that be purple? Because it got it red here, I see. So we make it uh, a different color altogether. Then when we do that, hmm, interesting that one. So it's brighter in the middle. So there's these all these variations. Um, that's outer glows. Oh, sorry, say OK or cancel. Um, there's inner shadows and inner glows and image effects and glass buttons and so on. And the, the mind, you know, there's loads and loads of variations within elements. So elements is quite um, flexible and does lots of different texts and fonts and um, so forth. And if we go back to layers, we can switch all these layers off if we want. And we can then go to the other thing, uh, go back to text. And if we take um, the one at the bottom left here, can you see that? Can not hear? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is called text on path or path. So we can then draw a line as we wish with the mouse like that. And then we can then start typing on that. So you say okay to that. And then you start typing wherever you want on the line. Um, Uh, how do you spell ocean? Yeah. You, see, you can read what I've read there. Mm -hmm. So I made that round a curve. Now, is that the end of it? Is there any more you could do? I mean, for instance, um, if I click OK, we've still got the curve here, he said. Can I do anything with the curve? I can move the whole thing. I found the other day I could actually modify the curve by putting dots on it. But I can't do it today. <laughs> it's also a way. Um, perhaps I have to do Control T on it. That might affect it. Obviously, I can do the skew again, can't I? If I right click, come on. Oh, my right click doesn't work at all. Um, transform skew. If I do skew, I didn't do skew correctly, did I? That's skew. No tick. The tick. That will have done that to the. The, way, the wet, wet ocean. So there are variations once you've done that with the curved line. So you can fit this, this line around anything you like. Uh, as you see, it doesn't remain permanently there. And I guess you can also, by altering um, that, you can change various things like, well, let's do Control T again around it and then I can change perhaps the size for stretch it sideways. Then to click the tick, the thing moved, but not quite what I wanted. Uh, control T again, I was go upwards. I'm trying to stretch the writing, you see. And then I move it up a bit further and click the tick. Oh, it's made it worse, hasn't it? <laughs> Isn't that fun? So I undo that under that. Yes, there we go. Anyway, there are, you can mess about with the with the typography like that in elements. Now there were, if we noticed <clears throat> when you did the T, uh, that's that one there. I'll just switch it off. Um, oh, that's still there, isn't it? Interesting. Um, if I click on one of these, this, this other one, say, this type horizontal mask, you then you can start typing here the yeah. ocean. Oh, what happens if I tick the click now? All I've got left is 
some uh, marching ants. So if I do control T on that, oh, the wrong bit uh, on here, if I can get that right. Yes, that's better. If I should, if I'd expand it a bit, um, oh, no, no, that's not what I want. Couldn't get into the corner. Right, you can see the um, the marching ants. I hope. Yes. So basically, that's a selection. Oh, it's got it on the background as well. That's interesting. How do I do that? Where are we on this lawn here? Is it that one? Oh, yes, right. We've got, I think we're on there instead of on there. I'll switch that one off. That's all right. So we're on the second layer up and we're not doing that one. We're not doing that one. We're not doing that one. Just checking what I'm doing. <laughs> right. So we've got the this as a not as a layer and just as a selection as a selection of the C. So if I did control J, I could probably get to, there you are. You can see on the the um, layers on the right, you can see that we've now got a layer with the word the ocean in it, but you can't see it on here. I'm not sure that's a good idea at the moment. Let's go back for a moment. What I want to try and do is fill that with something. So if I now go to fill, uh, edit, I mean, edit fill selection. Well, let, I'll tell you what, look, it says stroke. We could try stroking it with green, 50, 20 pixels on the outside. Let's see what happens if we do that. Can't see any effect. Oh, yes, we can. It's in the wrong layer, though. Switch that one off. That's what we've got. Why, do, why did it come to the bottom layer? Let me just undo that. Let me select. I thought the this bit was on the, oh, it isn't, is it? It's on that bottom layer. Okay. Peter, I'm going to have to go now. My pillow is calling me. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, so I'll... if you send me the copy of this, I'll watch it to the end. Okie dokie. Right. Have, right. A, have a nice sleep. Yeah. Okay. Bye. 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 Right. Right. I'm doing filling this, ed edit editing and filling. So we did it with selection, uh, stroking. And we did it too much. It's 20 pixels is obviously too much. So we'll do it to uh, six pixels and we'll do it to we'll do it green. We'll see what happens there. Well, there we are. It's a sort of glowing uh, selection. Now we could also, instead of doing that, we could edit, uh, edit uh, fill selection. Then we could fill it with a pattern. These are the patterns I was telling you about, Rich, uh, Roger, wherever they've gone to. Here we are. Mm -hmm. All these patterns here. Some of which are um, that's colour paper, but you can get the just the artist's surfaces, which are just text like, like, like that. So you could do that for your borders, or you could have grayscale paper, and that's similar. You see, let's try um, texture fills. Well, they're the same again, aren't they? Let's try patterns instead. Let's have to try, if we try a pattern, which one should we choose? Oh, what choice we've got! Oh, let's try that one. Oh, no, I had no idea. Let's try that, see what happens. So we've clicked that and we've filled it with a pattern. If we do control. So all you get is like that if you switch the selection off. That was control plus H to hide the selection. That wasn't a very successful way of doing it, was it? Let's try a different fill. And I was just trying these patterns out for the sake of argument. If we go to color paper, we just have a nice, well, cream color here. And that's showing it as um, as it is. It doesn't have the, I can't seem to change it in any other way, except by hiding it, you can see the effect. So if you want a, a weird, slightly mysterious text, there you are, that's one, one way to do it. Oh, now if I move it about, it's come as a negative. Mm. Ah, I could put that onto a different uh, picture, couldn't I? That's interesting, yes. Anyway, that's something I didn't know. <laughs> if I click that one, it's in dark. So it's all it's all really mysterious. Um, this is my original text, the ocean, and that's got selected with it. You can end up with interesting, interesting effects here. I'm sure you can see. 
control T and I can rotate that if I want to. So I can have it like that. So there's uh, multiple ways of doing everything here. <laughs> if I add all the other effects in as well. <laughs> what a mess. So that's how you don't do things. It's a bit too much. <laughs> right. <clears throat> I think we'll move on to a different photograph. Um, so what have we got at the top? We've got that one. Yes, we'll, we'll try this one instead. This is where I use the <clears throat> the um, the one that goes around a path. But you could, I was thinking of this one, you could go around each of these bit here with a path, get your text to go around a jagged thing like that. That's one thing you can do. Um, and it says you could draw it like what I would do, like that. Um, I'll undo that one. It says modify. I'm not quite sure what that does at the moment. Why that should be modified, I don't know. I don't understand that one. That's so, oh, it's got dots on it. Ah, look, that's where you I got the dots. I knew there were some dots somewhere. So you can do it after you. You could change your path later on. So you could have the most weird path for your text. So having done that, you then go to your typeface, which is here. Why doesn't it type, type on there? Um, regular, bold, still can't do the type. Oh, I've got to click the tick, which is here, yes. Then I can start typing on it. Can you see anything? Because I can't. Why doesn't it do it? I'll make that black or something dark like that. Uh, yes. Oh, I see it's got it here. Oh, this is in the way now. Ah, go away. The color swatch thing is right on top of the thing underneath. <laughs> mm -hmm. Click the tick. Then you should be, there you are. I knew you could get the thing. There it is. And now if I click it in a different place, uh, come on over here, come on. All right, don't do it. B, A, T, C, F. It's run out of, it's run out of um, place where it's got to write it on, I think. Control Z doesn't do anything. Oh, can't do anything at all. So I think I'll abandon all that. <clears throat> so if we go to the history, which is down here now, um, should better get back to square one. Open. There we are, back to square one. Right, that's how we do it in, in, in Photoshop um, elements. I thought it'd be useful as well to try it, and I'll stop sharing, I guess, Stop sharing and try it in, in fact, in iPicky while we're at it. We can always use iPicky, can't we? I've got it here, haven't I, somewhere? Where is it? It's that one. Well, that's all. This is, this, is what, um, this is what Maureen sent this morning. Uh, something about a competition in Bells in Art. And there are all these pictures of these. You know about this, Alan, I expect. Uh, well, it came in. Oh, uh, I don't know whether you can see it. Am I, yes, am I sharing uh, it? Yeah, oh, yes. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah, uh, <coughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, that's something where I can send on to everybody if they want to see it. But um, uh, where am I really? That's, that came from this link here. Okay. Right, now, what I'm trying to do is get to iPicky. Okay. Here. Here we are in iPicky. Um, that's right, if I move myself out of the way. Now I've set, I've set in here a set of pictures already. Um, here are some of these stones I mentioned, and here are some of the, photo, the fair pictures, and um, some I've done, finished, and so on, and here's a, some I haven't even touched upon yet, haven't tried out. Uh, but this one, I think, was the original stone picture that I put the text into. 
Uh, or maybe it was, uh, and this was the original picture and I cut it down, that's right, to a square. But there are lots of others that are quite interesting. If I double click that one, you get a picture in a moment of that stone. You can see the rainbow thing there that they did, these kids. So you could, you've got some text here already. I can't read what it says. Yeah, looks, like, looks like happy, but perhaps it isn't. Hope, I think. Oh, it could be. Yeah, happy. No, happy. Yeah, you're right. Now, this is ideal, if you like, to, to do a curved text around it. Something. How do we do that in, um, how do we do that in this, in um, iPicky? Let's, let's first of all, let's do a bit of um, editing on it. First, we need to go to the editor. Oh, we're in the editor, aren't we? Um, uh, rotate. Oh, and they're not at the top. So auto fix is the first thing I always do. And I'll check that it's any different. It looks much the same. Crop it. I think they might crop it a bit. Um, I'm sure you know all about this anyway. So if we crop it, crop it in a little bit like that. Let's click apply. Then we might uh, resize it to make it a bit more sensible and make it to 1200 pixels, um, make it easy, that has done that. Then we might want to change the exposure. And then again, we might not. The highlights, you can change the highlights from separate from the, the shadows, which I think is rather clever uh, and change the contrast as well. So what does that look like? That, that'll do for now. Um, got vibrance, that's a very useful one in this instance. Um, so increase the vibrance of the picture here. You don't want to go that far, I don't think. That'll do. I've forgotten the sharpness. That's the first next thing you do on here. If we go to 100%, and it's 104% here, but we could enlarge it so we can see the effect of sharpness. Oh, we can see my camera shake. I can't have that. <laughs> We can go to sharpness and bring up the texture of the stones more, as you can see there, I think. Uh, or the clarity might do it. Just go that to clarity up a lot more. That's picking out the texture on the stones, is it not? And we do sharpness as well. And if we do fade, we can go from nothing to, to all of it. So we'll, we'll do most of it. OK, so we've done that. That'll, that'll do for changing the picture. Now, the next thing to get the typeface, we go to this one that's got layers on it. You may wonder why it's dark around here, by the way, but there's a control here for that. You see this light bulb? You can switch from that normal one to the dark one. Okay, and this one will give it a full frame if we want to do so. Um, and then we go back to, as I say, this layers one here. It's called Add Text, Stickers, and Images. So you click on that, and you've got um, the, the picture here, uh, not filling in the frame too well, not to matter. Now we've got layers and background. So we can add this, these three boxes here, which pick the middle one for the text. Once we've done that, your text is instantly put in the middle, if that's where you want it. Uh, and it's centralized and it's the size, a font size of 73. The line height is leading and in Photoshop elements terms. Um, so if you've got more text than that. To, to change the text, you click in this white box and change it to uh, <clears throat> stone. Oh, I'll put that Some nonsense like that, stony ground. That's the, the, the Thing we need to, if we wanted to change the font, the actual typeface, we click on this little box here, which is at the moment called Roboto Condensed. But you click on the next one if you wanted, and it's all in capitals that one or Essence Sans. Now, you know what Sans means, it means without, without any serifs. <clears throat> uh, timeless will have serifs, as you can see. And there are lots more fonts down here. So we could have a jab J and that'll be all in capitals or this one, which is all in strange <laughs> scripty sort of text. So you can change it to whatever you like, obviously. Um, and so let's change it to this one. 
uh, this is called lobster. Now, what do we else we want? But once we've decided that we need to tick on it, we click the tick to get back to the this thing here. So if I've got this text and I want to say change the size, I can just do that. If I want to change the color, I click on this box and choose any of these colors, or I can pick a color from here. Interesting, I picked an orange and it came out um, green. That's very strange. Um, <sighs> why did that happen? I'll trick on this purple, shall I? It's come out as a grey. <laughs> How strange. Uh, right, let's click a blue here. There, I can change the blue there. And it's easy enough to change. I can change it here as well, so I don't have any any green I want. Or alternatively, you can then have this little set of pictures here if you want. So I could have that colour or that colour. There's there's multiple numbers of variations of colour here, and there's this little wheel as well. Um, I think that was the first thing we had, wasn't it? I see. Yes, it was. Right. So there we are. We'll take that color there. Uh, and then we, what can we what, drop shadows? Here we have all the variations here. So you can see the drop shadow immediately. And another little wheel that we can use that to change it, the size of it. Size again does distance is really the major one. Opacity is very low. You don't want it too high, obviously. Distance, just the same as in Photoshop. Exactly the same. Those are all the same. The color you can change again to whatever color you want. Um, the, the the you can't really see it, can you? We'll go back to black. Okay. We click the tick. So that's the drop shadow. You could have a, a stroke on this particular font. I'm not sure the stroke is going to have much effect, but you can see it now on their gray stroke. If I uh, increase the size of the font, you probably easy, more easily see it. Yes, you can see the gray around it there. And if we click on here, we should be able to click fade to fade it away or size to make it bigger or smaller. And the color obviously as well. So that makes it a bit more clearer, if you like. And we can change, we can fade it a bit. So you've got quite a lot of variations on it. Now, the, <clears throat> the leading is the space between the lines, and they call it line height here. So if you want to get it together, you can do it that, like that. We can have it further apart. So I think when you've got a big font like this, you need to have it not auto, because it's a bit too, um, too spaced out. Letter spacing, that'll be stretching it sideways, I guess, like so. So it doesn't quite, it doesn't look right like that, does it? And it doesn't look right like that either. So you've got a, <laughs> you've got the variations almost too much. That's about right. That's 80% and that's 105%. A gradient is another of, a feature you've got where you've got two different colors of blue now, rather than the colors we had before. You can click on the little box on the left to change the color. Well, actually don't you click it here. So if we want a blue, we might want a different blue. Um, if we go to this box, I think we get a different blue. Um, the little circles where it is, that'll do. And then the other, if we want to go to the other color, we go to the other box, which is this one. And then change that one to whatever it is, like that. So then we've gone from this greenish color to this orangey color. And we can change the angle of that with that. So you can have it going from left to right or up top to bottom. It's supposed to be at an angle, I'm not quite sure. The background one, I don't think it, well, it's okay. I'll show you what it's like. Gives you a little box around your, your um, text. And again, you've got a, another box to change the color of it. You, if you don't want blue, can change that to uh, a green again if you wanted. You could have it a dark green, light green, like that. And having got that, you ought to put a stroke on that, shouldn't you, really? I don't know whether you can. Perhaps it's already got a stroke. It has. The stroke's already on that as well. Interesting. Inner stroke. Outer stroke. Hmm. Right. Okay, so that is a bit 
bit of um, <clears throat> work using photo iPicky. Having done that, you click apply always before it works, and then you need to do, seem to do it twice for that. Then you have to save it somehow or other, and you can save it in two places, or your computer or the photo library. If we do it in the library, it then gives you an option. Show it in the photo library, PL, close the photograph, or continue editing. So let's have a look where it is in photo library. It's up the top left now. And if you decide that you want to do more, you can double click it again. Um, and uh, if you open a new image, with, oh, I think we can go back on that. So now what we can do, instead of just saving it to, I, to the photo library, we can click it to my computer and it will select, you can change the name, the quality, whether it's PNG or JPEG. And then you can click save to my computer and it will be 1.9 <coughs> megabytes. So there you are, I've saved it to my computer. And if you want to, you can do lots more here as it does all this. I presume you can see all that. Um, I'm not quite sure what it does. It's to do with Adobe, you see, <laughs> muscling their way in. <laughs> so uh, we close the photograph. And then we got back to a blank screen. All right, now if we go back to the photo library, we can now click another photograph. Say, um, say this, this silly woman here. Sorry, lovely woman here. What's happened to it? Oh, there she is. Whoa. And it's a bit small, I suppose. Let's just enlarge it a little bit. You can see that, oops. Um, You can see she's using her mobile phone to um, photograph her children. So click fit on screen, one to one, or I can change it to whatever. So it needs a bit of attention, doesn't it? Let's go auto fix, uh, light only, tint and uh, I can't see that it makes any difference. Right, and we need to crop it, so I reckon quite a lot. It's too much brightness at the top there. Do we not, don't need all that. I'm being cruel here, aren't I? <laughs> so we need to click the tick somewhere. So it's still 1500 pixels by 1380 pixels. So it's quite, quite a large image still. Okay, now we need to, we don't need to re, was resize our right exposure. We'll, we'll, we'll do exposure using uh, levels for the moment. We can see there's no black here. Okay. Middle slider, oops. That's a weird. Okay, click apply. So we have a photograph. Um, now if we want to do something else with it, like put text on it, we then go to the one with the layers on it and we then choose the text Thing, and we've got the word your text here right in the middle, wherever we want it, put it at the bottom. Um, what should we call it? Smart phonery. Uh, smart phonery as a new word I just invented. <laughs> Can we see that? Yes. We can't actually see the text because it's too dark. If we do it in light, you can probably see it a bit better. Okay, um, increase the size, um, the letter spacing, and then we need could put a drop shadow in while we're at it. Want a better drop shadow than that, I think. Opacity, distance, angle, uh, size, of, right, uh, color. We haven't got, what color should we have? Um, yes. A blue? Maybe not. Purple? Yeah, it'll be more, more fun of the fair, won't it? He said. <laughs> so we have a, our drop shadow is purple. 
and we could we could blur it up a bit using the size as i think possibly you can't really see but anyway there we go stroke we could put a stroke around it what shall we put for that um have a black no that's not going to be any good is it oh yeah so we can see it that's quite neat i think it's quite happy with that and we don't need gradient don't need background that might actually be useful here yes it probably is useful to show it we need to fade it a bit i think fade it wrong way around it's interesting yes so there we are um done that if i said i've got to click apply twice and then save to the photo library and um if you click continue editing then you can click save it to your computer at the same time and you can click it as a jpeg or a png. sorry uh, oh, yeah. I was how, how do you find uh, your list of files when you're trying to save that uh right um let me close the photograph yeah you got it like that and if you go to photo library top left here yeah. normally that's a completely blank thing Right. Um, if I if I go to if I, if I first of all I can do Control A to select them all. He said, "How do I select them all? Click on that and click on the last one. That, that selects them all. Then you can actually save what I've got here. For instance, there's quite a lot there, as you can see. It's asking me to wait. So I've saved them somewhere. I've downloaded them somewhere. Oh, there they are." And it's saved in a file called IPICI PL6 zip. Where and, does it say that? Oh, uh, I've got another screen up, which you can't see. Hold on. I, mean, I didn't realize that. Um, can you see it now? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, as you see, it says it gives you the number of images 27 files, 110 megabytes. So it's quite a big file I'm saving. I can then it's a zipped file, so I can do the usual test. Oh, I'm using I'm using um, uh, a particular program to do this called uh, what's it called? Oh, I can't remember that little P shape. P P zip, I think it's called. Yes. Anyway, it tells me I, I can check it with that, and it tells me that everything is okay there. And uh, so I click OK, and then I can extract all these if I wanted to somewhere else. At the moment, they're in in I think um, my downloads file so if I want to pick this lot up again I need to go to downloads um, so I need to go to downloads to see that and if I go to you stop sharing I know that I know I know that I don't know why telling me things I don't know about right to share again I was trying to share um well um I'll have to click ordinary share you should have my the original images back is that right yep so for now if i now click them and delete them all by clicking in the, the 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 remove items bucket and i say delete but i've already saved them so i don't need to worry but you're worried about um, finding pictures to put in there aren't you roger uh, no what i'm worried about is ah. <laughs> no you've got your picture to save what I, and you say save to computer what I'm co concerned about is finding a specific file. A specific photograph? No, no, a specific file to save it in. Let's say it was homework. I want to save that in homework or I want to save... I see. Right. Um, okay, well, I'll have to open some pictures then, won't I? So let me just go to... <laughs> let me find the, um, the zipped file and, and bring it back. Um, I think it's under there. What was it called? Um, I know, I've got it here. Got to open P zip. Come on, open up. There we go. And I now need to extract it back to wherever we were before. Um, oh, where is it going to go to? Downloads. It's no good going to downloads, is it? What I need to do is, I've got a bit hunt around my computer now. I'll, I'll tell you what, let's not do that. Just put it into downloads and pick it up from that. So it's now a, down, a downloaded file, a separate, not not as a, not as. Right, I can now share with you on that one in a moment, when I get the thing sorted out. New share, 
Yes, here we are. There we are. I've put them all into this folder here. Okay. So you want to know when you've when you've got a picture. Look, we've, we've let's, <laughs> let's open this picture first. In it'll open it in Element in uh, Fastone Viewer first. The way my thing works. Then I need to open it with an external program. Oops. I need to click on E. I'll just do E. What's happened to it? E. Right, we've got this picture here, this young lady here with her child. And if we put some a bit of text on, you want to put some text on, let's put some ordinary Only text. Only more thumbnails at the moment. Oh, I'm, I have some. Yep, right, right. New share. I've discovered that, uh, which one do we use? This one, I think. What have you got now? Okay, got the screen in elements now. Okay, so we're now going to put some text on the bottom here, I think. Um, I'm talking about doing it in iPicking, Peter. Oh, uh, oh right. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yes, I'm doing it in the wrong thing, aren't I? Let me go back to get it back into iPicky. iPicky. I've forgotten how to do it at the moment. It's, my mind's gone a blank. Uh, yes, need to open it in. Um, F, come on. Yes, it's in the wrong bit, aren't we? Come on. How do I do that? I keep putting it in, into the wrong place. Um, so. Why can't I remember? Ridiculous. Uh, edit with it. Yes, edit with it. It doesn't work with iPicky, does it? Of course. I keep forgetting that. iPicky is on here, isn't it? Here's iPicky. I need to go to pick it up from somewhere else. So I've got to go back to the fair pictures. Any, any, any picture in iPicky and, and just show me how to save it, basically. Yeah, I, I know. Let's go to where we were, which was typography. Is that where we are? Yeah, it'll do, won't it? Yeah, here, yeah, so we take a photograph like this one. There it is in iPicky. But we can only see elements. Oh, keep forgetting. Come on, this thing floats up. And I can't get to the new page, new screen. Right, that should be it, I think. You should have a mostly black pic screen with a grey block in it. Yeah. And the the, uh, the I've now opened it in iPicky. Okay. So you now put a text on. Uh, let's go to here. Put some text on. Where are we? If you go, if you want to save that picture on on your computer, where where. How, how do you select the folder that, that you put it into? That's what, uh, that's what um, Rich, Roger is asking. I'm yeah. just trying to show. Oh, okay. So I put here the, um, I just put some text in here. The ocean, spelled wrong, is it? No, it's okay. Right, let's assume we've, we're all happy with that. We then click apply in iPicky twice. Then oh. you want to go to save and you could do do that into the photo library and you can show it in the photo library or you can continue editing. Then you can say, go to save to my computer. Yeah. Now you're saying, where does it go? Yeah, how yeah. do we find the, the folder? Yes, it doesn't seem to be any control here, does there? No. So where does it go? It goes into it downloads. Yeah, I think it goes into downloads. That you is the problem. Save you can't actually choose a folder, it just goes into downloads. I, I think it's correct. So if I, if I save it to there, then open my downloads folder, which you, of course, can't see at the moment. Um, so the downloads folder should you close, be... pick, close the photo. Yeah, all right. Uh, uh, you should have. What have you got now? Uh, your picture coming back up, the ocean. Right. Uh, that is in downloads. That's yeah. where it is. That's where I saved it. Then from there, you can then move it to using this this uh, control at the top, which says move to folder. Mm. Click on that. And then I find that under the okay. uh, thing, you've got history or favorites. And if I click into favorites to DI plus, which is where we are, I would do that, move to DI plus, right? Then I open 
from favorites. I open DI plus from the list here and it won't be in the right folder because it's now at the bottom of the page here. So now I move it up physically to typography here, where it's now got a green surround. You got that? Yep. I let go and it says, oh, you got it already. And um, I say um, replace or skip or rename. How about that rename? That's a good idea, isn't it? Goodness knows where it's gone now. Let's go and have a look. <laughs> so what have I, it's got to put them all together and we can see what have I got. So I think I originally had that picture and the one I've just done is that one. That's renamed itself something or other. Yes, yeah, so I got this picture from Unsplash, much of interest. And there's the one I did with the, the wavy line. So is that better, uh, Roger? Yeah, well, it's, yes, yes, it is, but it's, it's quite a roundabout process, isn't it? it is, unfortunately, it is a funnily roundabout process, yes. Um, you think to be a... I find when I'm saving a picture on iPicky and save to my computer, and it comes up, do you want to rename it? You can do, and you click on save, it then throws up another window where you can select where you want to save it to. Mm. I just wonder if you're firing things into Fast Home Viewer and creating a sort of an intermediate stage. Yeah, right. Let look. I've opened. Here is um, iPicky, and if you just open a picture without the photo library, you get these these selections which you didn't used to get. Ones on the clipboard, ones on create image, ones on the webcam, and so on. So you could drag and drop them, or, or pick it from a web page, or from your computer somewhere. So when you do that, what do you get? You get well. In this case, I'm getting typography. It's but I could go to anywhere else in my computer now. Okay, so that will that will. Um, let's go to West Dean, for instance. If there's any pictures there? There aren't any pictures there. Onward. Well, they're not the right sort of files, are they? <laughs> I need to go to pictures down here first. Um, ah, virtual landscape. Here we are. If I take that one. But we're still in Farstone Viewer. Oh, I'm not. I'm I'm somewhere else. Um, <laughs> oh dear. Stop sharing. Oh, here we go. New share. Um, so I think that's I picky. Yes. You think I'm there. I've opened this picture. Right now, if I want to save that, if I do something like um, uh, blah, 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 what should we say? Uh, extract details. That'll that'll ruin it. Yes. There you go. Um, so if I do that and I click OK, and then I want to save it, I can save it to my computer. Where will it save it? I want to have to assume that it's saving it back to where I took it from. But is that right? No. Yeah. I've saved it. Well, where is it saved it to? Hold on, it's come Download. out. And then when you can say that it's come out in downloads, as you so rightly say. So it always comes out in downloads. OK. I'll delete that one. I think. Alan's saying if you rename it, you can then choose the folder, aren't you? Oh, yes, yes. yes. Once, you've, once you've got it in no, this one here, the stony ground one, that came out in downloads. You can then rename it, obviously. Um, and you can rename it by, um, what do you do? You, you press F2, don't you? And they, you've got that rename thing and you can change it to whatever you like. So we can't see that. Oh, can't you? I thought, no, oh God. It's very difficult to keep up with all these variations. Um, I think that should be there. Right. You, can you see the rename folder now here in the middle of the screen? Yep. And uh, it's got it's called file name Spitfire Painted Shoes. That's what I it was. And I'm just, just omitted the word Spitfire and got just got painted stones 27. I can get rid of that. And it also says PNG. So it'll still save it as a PNG. And it's renamed it somewhere. Now, where's that gone? <laughs> Finding these things sometimes. Oh, I know it might take us a little while, mightn't it? Oh, there it is. It's, it's there. It didn't move. It stayed in the same place. And having got that, I can then move it to typography like that well eventually i go to favorites di plus 
Yes, it is a bit tedious, but I got, I've got used to it sort of thing. Typography, yeah, typography. Well, my typography file is getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> right. Uh, is that, does that make any sense to you at all? Yeah. Right, well, I think it's time we stopped sharing and, and stop the recording. Um, the homework will, of course, be to experiment with your type facing uh, abilities. Um, uh, interesting typefaces would be welcomed. You don't have to use the ones that are already in the system. You can get them from the internet, all sorts of places I expect. Oh, there was one thing I didn't show was a, uh, I'll, I'll send it as a, a link, as a YouTube thing on typefacing, a typography the style of it, the way it works and all that, all what serifs mean and what they don't mean and what, why, why you should use one and not the other and so forth. It's quite an interesting little um, video. And there's plen plenty more like that. So I, have I stopped recording yet? No, stop.